Hey, it's Tpac, and I am back in Katawa Shoujo, and it was also just pointed out to me that my censorship in the last video was not good. Um, what often happens with my video editing software is it'll mess up the overlays and either make it long, slightly longer or slightly shorter. Or slightly misalign it. It made it slightly shorter. So there is like a split second of visible Misha. A couple times. So for all of those complaining about me censoring in the first place, A, I have to, and B, you get a one second view of that, so enjoy. Just play the game yourself if you want, <laughs> if you want to see all that. Anyway, that aside, I hope the video doesn't get taken down. I'm not gonna re-upload it, uh, but I'm gonna save the file just in case I need to. So, yeah, um, this is Emmy's, uh, bad ending, uh, playthrough, I guess, uh, basically, I have two choices I need to make, and it looks like, yeah, this is an important choice, because Act 4, there's only one set of Act 4, so, yeah, so I'm supposed to go after her, this is when Emmy kind of storms off, Going after her does not seem like a good idea in any sense. So I guess it makes sense. The only way to find out is to go to the source, and the source is currently pretending that she has to use the toilet. I excuse myself politely from the table and head that way, only to catch sight of Emmy not in the bathroom, but in the kitchen just next to the living room. Emmy's left the door open, and as I approach, I see she's holding on the table and, and attempt to compose herself, an effort that fails as soon as I open my mouth. Doesn't look like nature's call was that urgent. Emmy jumps and glares at me. What are you doing here? I didn't come to be here with other people. I just wanted to help you. You look pretty rattled. Oops, wrong button. I said it was nothing, didn't I? And besides, I thought we'd establish that you can't help me. Now we've established that you're stubborn. Look who's talking, the guy who followed me. This is different. I want to help you with whatever this is funny, because I just want you to leave me alone. But why? Why can't you just trust me? We've been over this already, Hisao. I've got to deal with this stuff on my own. I won't accept that. You need my help, you just won't take it. My wording seems to be a, seems to have been a little off. More than a little, Hisao. More than a little. Need? I need your help? Well, it's a good thing we met, isn't it? Because otherwise I guess I'd just be a broken human being, wouldn't I? No, oh, it's a damn good thing that Hisao came along to save the day, isn't it? Because God knows I can't save myself, can I? I'm just a poor, emotionally damaged girl with no legs, right? I mean, you know I don't think that... Really? Because if you thought differently, then I don't think you'd be, st be here saying I need your help. I've got pretty far in life as a normal human being without you. So what, nothing we've shared was important? I'm just the guy who hangs out with you? You're my boyfriend, Hisao, not my savior. Well, no, that much is obvious. You won't even consider that I could be a help to you, will you? You'll just bottle it all up and hope that a run will so solve your problems, or you'll come visit me and we'll fool around until you feel better. Her mom is in the other room. That's not being a healthy human being, Emmy. That's not what a relationship means. Well, it's what it means to me right now, so I wish... She seemed to reconsider her words just then, a flicker of pain, of doubt of, on her face. For a moment, I think she's about to cry. But the moment passes, and now she's compo composed herself again. Whatever that wish was, we'll have to go unspoken. Look, I just I can't do this right now. What? Have a serious conversation? Be open? Be honest? Give a damn about anyone besides yourself and your problems? What do you know about my problems? Nothing. You don't know where what I've been through, so you don't pretend that you do. 
I know that you have nightmares, and I know your father's gone. What happened to him? Emmy jerks her head backwards as if I've just slapped her. The brutal quality has gotten back in her voice. That's enough. This is stupid. This whole conversation has just been variations of Emmy stonewalling me. You've also been super forward, man. Not entirely her fault. What, you won't even answer that question? Fine, keep your secrets. They can lie in the grave as far as I'm concerned. Poor choice of words. Emmy's eyes widen in shock. When she speaks again, it's in a voice that is low, dangerous. Get out of my house, is how. The sudden change in her tone snaps me out of my self-righteous anger and makes me realize it with the dawning horror of what I've just said. Emmy, I didn't mean. I said, go, is how. Tell my mother that she cooked a wonderful meal, but you've forgotten a prior engagement, and get out of my house. She's trembling now, shaking with anger or sadness or determination. Her voice is still low, controlled, I hate my email, almost a growl. I reach out to put an arm on her shoulder to apologize for going too far, but she jerks away from my touch. Get out. What can I do? I walk out the kitchen and go to the living room. Make my apology to Mrs. Iberazaki and let myself out. You done goofed, Hisao. The morning alarm sounds as I roll over, switching it off. My eyes open blearily to stare at the ceiling. Uh, can I skip? No. What am I going to do? Do I get out of bed, go down to the track, and pretend that nothing happened? Will Emmy even show up? After less than evening's events, I doubt it. Even supposing that she did, what would I do then? Get over this fight just to dance the same routine the next time something, something's bothering her? Now that I spoke hastily last evening, especially trying to use her father as leverage. But was anything I said really off the mark? She won't let me in, ever, and she'll be forced to suffer alone. Nothing I do, nothing I say is going to change that. She won't change, and she's already decided to keep me at arm's length. Can I really bring myself to go down there and see her, knowing that I'm never going to get past where I am now? No, I decide. I really can't. Not today. I roll over and go back to sleep. She probably won't be there anyway. Okay. A similar mental conversation repeats itself when it comes time to go to lunch, and I've eaten the cafeteria alone. No one's here. The thought, very thought makes me feel ill. That night, I go for a run. I'm solo for the first time since Emma got sick after the track meet. Skip seeing the nurse just in case he asked about Emmy. I don't want to talk about her either. The next day, I do the same thing. Alarm off, stay in bed. Eat alone, run a lot. To fill the time that I would usually be spending with Emmy, I start reading more. It works surprisingly well until I find myself ducking into a restroom because I see her walking down the hall in between classes. If she noticed me, she didn't show it, even though I don't suppose she ever shows anything. Certainly not to the girls from her class I see talking cheerfully to her, or to her fellow track members, especially not to me. Alarm off, stay in bed. The town and I have a lengthy talk about the possibility that string theory is plausible. I don't buy it myself. More than four dimensions I can buy, but a bunch of vibrating strings at a subatomic level. That's asking a bit much. Looks like I'm not the only one that thinks this way, too. Apparently it's not really as strong a theory as it once was. Matau just... Matau says that's just because nobody has found the right way of looking at the data yet. Eat alone. The rooftop is deserted today. I briefly wonder where Emmy and Rin are, but shrug off the question. The, mo the important thing is that they aren't here, so I won't have to talk to them. Since I have nobody to talk to, I bring a book with me to read. The weather's nicer, if getting a little hot. Hopefully it will be cooler in the evening. A cool breeze seems to back up my theory. Run alone. It is in fact cooler at the track. No sign of Emmy, which is exactly the sort of thing I'm going for. I stretch out and start on my usual run, trying, to har trying hard to ignore the lack of a running partner in front of me. Finding my thoughts drifting damnably to the girlish laugh, incorrigible grin, those wide and friendly eyes, 
her incredibly toned body. I increased the pace to clear my head, chew up the distance between me and the turns, find the speed that makes me think only of my legs and how much they burn. It's how you are doing the exact same thing, Emmy does. You've literally become Emmy. What are you doing? I glance at my watch as I round the final turn, noticing that my time's gotten faster. My heart seems a little squirrely tonight, so I give myself a few extra cool down laps just to be safe. No reason to bring this to the nurse's attention. I'll be fine. A rather Emmy-ish thought I'll, uh, uh, to have, I'll admit. I have to hope that eventually I'll stop thinking about her so much. I finished another book before going to bed that night. I'll have to stop by the library tomorrow. I don't know why I keep the early alarm on anymore, but it wakes me up the next morning just the same. I still turn it off and go back to sleep. That afternoon, as I get ready to head to the cafeteria for another solo lunch, I got a new book about a couple of con men in ancient Persia that I'm pretty excited about reading. I'm suddenly cornered by Misha and... Huh, I guess here's Misha. Off to eat alone again, Hee-chan? You've noticed, you know. We? Oui. Uh-huh, Shichan and I noticed you've been spending more time alone. She wanted me to find out why, so I told her I'd ask you. I'm surprised she didn't ask me herself. She would have, but she wanted to get head start on some paperwork. There's a lot of it since we're coming up at the end of the term, you know. Why does the sudden interest in my well why the sudden interest in my well being anyway? Ah, uh, Shi Chan said it's the duty of the student council to keep track of the emotional health of the students. To allow a con constituent to spiral into depression unchecked would be an unforgivable failure in the council's duties. Well that's easy then, I'm not depressed. But you're eating alone, and nobody's seen you and Emmy together at all. Something happened, didn't it, Hee-chan? Misha's voice takes on a slightly sterner tone, though somehow she keeps a, a familiar lilt at the end of her sentences. I purse my lips, uncertain about how to respond. So, if I downplay, it's a bad ending. And then, if I give in and let Misha know, it says it's an instant replay. Don't know what that means, but I'm gonna downplay. I'm not sure I like the idea of airing private matters to the student council. Nothing major. Hee-chan, lying is a terrible thing to do. She's not buying it. Okay, give her something, but not too much. We had a disagreement, and we haven't resolved it yet. Oh, why not? Because, look, I don't need to talk about this, okay? It's not a big deal, okay? I'm fine. And Emmy, is she fine too, Hee-chan? Misha's voice has taken on a decidedly serious edge. This is ridiculous. I don't know, okay? I haven't asked. Things are complicated right now. What kind of man are you? Things get a little rough and you're going to hide from them? Misha's sudden retort catches me completely off guard. Shichan will call that a cowardly act, and she'd be right too. You two are close, happy together, and you're just going to roll over and die without a fight? You should be willing to fight for your girlfriend, so? It seems that Misha is channeling Shizune at the moment. It wouldn't surprise me to find out that Shizune gave her a script to follow based on my answer. Misha points an imper imperious arm at the classroom door. Now you go get out of the classroom and patch things up. Uh, we still have afternoon classes. This doesn't seem to dissuade Misha. Then after class, you better do it, Hichan. It's important that you don't leave things like this. Why? Misha regards me once, as one would regard an animal's droppings. Didn't you care about her, Hisao? This is, that's important, isn't it? Huh. She's right. I did. I do care about her. Don't I? Okay. I'll see her after class. Great. I'll let Shita know you're okay, then. The lilt returns. I guess that means Misha isn't angry at me anymore. She waves and disappears down the hallway. And I ate my lunch. While afternoon classes draw to a close, I prepare myself for the task ahead. I have to see Emmy. Misha was not at least was at least correct about that. Um, sorry. 
my mom might try to t uh, Skype me in a second. <laughs> I have to see Emmy. Misha was at least correct about that. Leaving the question of Emmy and I an open issue won't work. At the very least, I need to apologize for what I said. I consider going to a room to find her. But she's probably still at the track. The steps out of the main building and down the path to the track make me feel like a doomed man. I have a twisting, horrible feeling in my gut that this is all going to go horribly wrong. That I'm not going to accomplish anything. Except for maybe driving the final nail in the coffin of whatever it was Emmy and I had. There she is, just as expected running laps around the track after everyone else has gone to shower and dinner. I don't wave or even make my presence known. I just sit on the bleachers and watch her run laps. It takes her a few trips around the track before she notices me, after which she skids to a stop, eyes wide in surprise. The surprise is quickly masked by anger, which in turn fades behind a mask that I, alwe I, that I already know is impenetrable. What are you doing here? Not quite the response I'd hoped for, but at this point I don't have much of a choice. I wanted to apologize for what I said the other day. The other day? She laughs, a curt exclamation of disbelief. It's been almost a week, is how. Yeah, well, better late than never, right? When he crosses her arms and stares at me coolly, as if sizing me up, finally she nods. Hm, I suppose you're right. Water on the bridge, under the bridge, then. I forgive you. Is that all? Her almost impatient question catches me up so off guard that she's halfway down the track before I think to shout after her. No, wait. And he stops, turns, and walks back to me, breathing a little heavily and looking annoyed at my interruption. What? Okay, I need to make this right somehow. I have to know where I stand, maybe patch things up. Can you at least sit down? I think we're okay talking here. Fine, sure. Look, about us, I pause, trying to think of a good way to phrase what I'm about to say. But before I can launch into a passionate, in, impassionate plea, for giving me another chance, Emmy's already spoken. There's no more us, Hisao. Why not? We're just not right for each other. She delivers this outrageous statement without even looking me in the eyes. I don't believe you. We're great with one another. I says the guy apologizing for getting thrown out of my house last week. It was a fight. I said something really incredibly stupid and I apologize for it. And how many times had we already discussed the problem that started the fight? How many times had I told you that there was a set boundary that I wouldn't cross? And how many times did you keep trying to cross it? Because your boundary was stupid. And he rolls her eyes, folds her arms across her chest, and cocks her head to the side. Don't you see this is how? This is just why we're not right for one another. Her voice softens a little. And she reaches out to stroke my cheek. You're a good guy, but we're not going to work. With a horrible, lurching feeling, I realize that she's been practicing this. Maybe every day since I left her house. Even this cheek stroke seemed rehearsed, like something out of a movie. She never intended to give me another chance. Hell, she probably would have been fine never seeing me again. So that's it then. Nothing else to say but, gee, it was fun while it lasted, but so long? This actually seems to amuse Emmy far more than I wanted it to. She gives a rather morbid-sounding chuckle. That's how I've lived my life, Isao. You should know that by now. And it was fun. A sad smile. She shivers slightly, and the smile vanishes. But it's over now. It's for the best. I want to yell, to scream at her, to make her see reason that this is stupid, the whole act, that she's just afraid of me. Afraid of what being close to someone means. I want to tell her that I love her and that I can't just give up on her at the drop of a hat. Except, there's no point. She's made up her mind. We're done. Fine. Emmy nods, satisfied. I want to hit something. Good. She brightens with false cheeriness. See you around, Hissau. No, you won't. You won't even try. She shrugs, as if to say have it your way, and turns back, turns her back on me once more, quickly accelerating around the curve of the track. I feel numb. This is it. The end of the road for us, whatever that was. Closure at last, at least. 
I may rouse the track again without sparing me a second glass. She's running much faster now, and I can't help but think of that first run together. I ran to catch you, to try and prove I wasn't as weak as I knew I was, but it ended badly for me, didn't it? And now you're off running too fast for me again, and I have the choice to run after you again. But I won't. Not this time. You'd never let me catch you. I don't even notice walking away from the track or walking into my room or pulling a book out of my bag to read. Just before bed, I reset my alarm. Emmy and I have had our final encounter. We didn't speak again. We don't speak again after that. Is it bad to say that I liked this ending? This ending was much more emotional than her good ending. I don't know. I wasn't the biggest fan of Emmy. As you could probably tell. I would say, in order of my favorites, after seeing all of the endings now, Hanako will always be number one. The others don't even deserve a position, really. That's how high up Hanako is. Then I would... But... I guess... Uh, who? Then I guess Rin. And then... Lily? Can I put Misha? Because I like Misha a lot better. I'll put Misha as number three. Then Lily. Then Shizune. Then... Emmy. I, I just... I don't know why. I just was not that fond of Emmy. Emmy and Shizune were pretty much equal. I'll put them equal. So with Lily too. I didn't. <laughs> the problem with Lily is there was not a lot of emotional stuff in her arc. Like even the neutral. It was a neutral ending. She, I I would say if she had a bad ending, I would think a lot more of her, because what the bad endings do is give you so much more character development. And with Lily, it, I was it was just kind of boring. Um, Rin, that neutral ending was phenomenal. Shizune, I just felt bad. And it, so with the good ending for Shizune, we were pretty much like, hey, we graduated. And there wasn't really much on Hasao and Shizune, but more the student council moving on. And that's the part that I wasn't too fond of, the moving on part. Um, because it's like move on, move apart kind of thing. But the bad ending I liked because you saw more of Shizune's personality. Same with Misha's, kind of. Um, yeah, so anyway. Next time, I will do the... Um, it's called the Kenji route. Which is when you don't get it with anyone. So yeah, look forward to that next time. Thanks for watching.